Hello and welcome to the Games Dev Outpost. In this video, we're going to talk about Niagara and beam emitters in Unreal 4. So to get this started, I'm going to right click in my content browser and I'm going to create a Niagara emitter from an empty blank template. And then we'll give it a name, NE, whatever you want. And then we'll open that up and we'll save it. Now I'm going to start this with a ribbon render instead of a sprite render. I'm just going to turn that off for now and I'll add my ribbon render. In the ribbon render under material, we want to search for ribbon and you should see default ribbon material. If this isn't showing up for some reason, you can come to the view options. You can turn on show engine content, show plugin content. So I'll add that. Now there's a few things we need to do to get things set up for the beam emitter. So we're not spawning anything yet. So we're going to spawn burst instantaneous. I'm going to set that pretty high to something like 100. But you'll see once we add that, we're still not spawning anything. So in emitter update, we want to search for beam emitter setup. And then there's one more thing we need to add. And in particle spawn, we want to search for beam again. And that's going to be spawn beam. And now once this compiles, you just see that we have a beam showing up. And it has our material fading out at the end. So. Now that I have this beam, I want to change the size of it. So in particle spawn, we're going to add a beam width. And by default, when you add that, you know, we can adjust this overall. And that's pretty good. But what I want to do is I want to change this shape based on a curve. So I'm going to change the beam width to a curve. And you can see that this is tapering down, but this actually isn't changing over time. And that's in part because that's not how beams work. But it's also because this normalized age isn't doing anything for us in this situation. So what I want to do is I want to base this curve index on a ribbon link order. As we get to different parts of the ribbon or the beam, they're going to change in size. So as soon as we add that, you can see that this is tapering out or it's tapering in. So I'm going to add another key here in the middle and I'll set that to one. And in this first key, I'm going to set to zero. And now we have something very sharp. It's like a diamond, right? So I'm going to grab each one of these keys. I'm going to right click and I'm going to just smooth this out with auto. And this first key, I'm going to pull the tangent up so that it's pretty smooth, but you don't want to go too far because you'll bubble out the tangent on the second key. And I'll pull this back a little bit, a little bit more. And then I'm going to scale this curve so that our overall curve is going to be wider. All right, now I want to add some color to this as well. So I'm going to come to particle update and I'm going to type in scale color. And in here, right away, I'm going to change the scale alpha to a curve and that should be just fine as it is. So we're starting lit and then over time, it's just going to fade out altogether. Now for the scale RGB, I'm going to multiply this, multiply a vector so that we have two. What I want to do here is I want to have A be the color and B be the intensity. So I'm going to change B to a float and I'll set this to something like 40. And we should see that it's a lot brighter. And then A, I'm going to change this to a color, linear color. And then I'm going to change this linear color to a curve, color from curve. This way, our first key is going to be something blue. We'll add another key, and this key is going to be green. And then we'll add one more here, and this one will be yellow, orange. And then we'll just change this last one to be something magenta. Now right now, because of the normalized age in the curve, this color is going to change over time, right? But I'm going to change this curve index to be the ribbon link order. And that way, each one of the different segments will change color instead. And it's still going to fade out over time. All right, so we still have more to talk about in the beam emitter setup. So once we click on that, you should see beam start and beam end. Now, even though beam start is filled with something, we can change this to a make vector so we can break it. And then once we have that, you can see that we can change this starting position. 
right? Where the beam starts. And then just the same, we can change the beam end. So I'm going to break the beam end where I'm going to make a vector. And what I want to do is I'm going to change this x value to be a curve. And we're going to leave the first key at 0. But this last key, I'm going to set this to 180. That way, over time, we can scale up to that 180. Now, the thing is with beam emitters, that if you want to dynamically update stuff, you actually have to add another module. So in particle update, we want to search for beam again, and we're looking for update beam. And there's not really a lot in here. There's not really anything in here. But right after we add that, now we'll see that those values are updating over time. We're going from that 0 to that 180. Now, some of the other things here in the beam emitter that we can look at are beam tangents. Kind of like how we work with curves, that's exactly what this is. This is a spline that has different points on a curve. So we can use beam tangents. And as soon as we turn that on, we'll get some defaults in here. And you'll see that now this is arcing. Right? Now, if we wanted to, we can come in here and we can break these as well. So now we have 0, 0, 0. Break this one too. And you can see what each one of these are doing in which direction they're going as they arc. Right? And you can see that there's a different tangent down here. So I'm going to set these all back to 0. And in the y, I'm going to search for a sign for the start one, and for y in the end, I'm going to search for cosine. And once we get that, we should get this twirly looking shape. And if you want to do something similar, you could add a sine into the z, and then a cosine into the other z. All right, so now the cool thing about beam emitters are that they don't just work with ribbon renders. They can work with the sprite renderer as well. So if we turn the sprite renderer on, you'll see that these are going all along the path here. You know, so if we come back to spawn versus instantaneous and we set this down to one and we slowly increase this, you'll see that we get a particle in the start, we get a particle in the end, and then we get a particle in the middle. And as we increase, this just starts to fill out more and more. Right. Now, notable with this, if you turn off spawn burst instantaneous and we put in a spawn rate, spawn rate doesn't really work with the curve. We're spawning a bunch of particles here, but to get that curve, we need to use an extraordinary amount of particles compared to the spawn burst instantaneous. So it does work, just to fill it out takes a lot more. So we'll turn on spawn burst instantaneous again. And now I want to adjust the size of these sprites. So I'll come to initialize particle and I'll change sprite size mode to uniform. Now they're all about the same size. So now I want to come to particle update and I'm going to add a scale sprite size. And in here, I'll change this to a float. And then I'm going to change this to a curve. That way, over time, it'll change. Kind of like before, I'm going to change the curve index to be ribbon link order. And now they'll be smaller and smaller the further they are away. Cool. Now this pretty much covers the basics of beam emitters. You can go around and play with the different modules now, change some different things up. But if you thought this video was useful and it helped, please let me know by commenting down below and liking the video. Thanks guys.